they were one size larger component and before you make your resections. In this case, we're not notching, but if you put the, the stylus should um, help you with avoiding a notch. Unless you translate the block further posteriorly, then you may consider upsizing the block one size to, to assist with uh, minimizing the risk of notch. And for those of you that are measured resection folks, I mean, if you're concerned about the thickness of the cut as compared to the component, I think we're fairly close in this case. Again, we don't rely upon measured resection to estimate my flexion space, but it's in this specific case, and in, in various needs, it's going to be quite close to the measured technique. So now that we've uh, have finished my AP cuts, I'll take my pins out, <coughs> take my femoral positioning device out, and I'll finish my chamfer cuts with the Toblerone bar, which is the chamfer only guide. Once again, if you're, uh, if you're interested, you can, uh, you can assess the flexion space for a 10 millimeter insert. That's our, uh, the, the, the uh, tracer blocks have one end that's for the flexion space and one end for the extension space. So flexion, make sure the flexion space uh, portion's in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the flexion space. And then we can drop a rod down as well and just make sure our resection is uh, where we want it to be. And as you can see, we're right down the center of the uh, tibial crest. So. And I believe that my flexion space is uh, fairly well balanced. You can use this rod to help assess that by twisting the rod. And that gives you a nice estimate. And I believe we're very, very well balanced in this particular case. We can then do the same in extension. Can you see that again, please, with the rod? And could you hold the heel up, please? And our extension space, again, we'll test it. And again, extremely well balanced, with less than a millimeter of toggle on each plane in extension. And uh, let's put the extension side in. This is the extension space. There's an extension side and a, and a flexion side. This is the extension side that's in. And I'll assess my stability here. And again, I think my lateral side is just slightly more lax than my medial side, and that would be consistent with her deformity. Put that spacer block back in, 10 millimeters in extension. And that's much better. She now achieves a reasonable extension. My medial side and my lateral side are, are well balanced. So here's the, we're, we're now, we can now assess our alignment. Here's this, the anterior superior spine. If you come over two or three finger breaths, you can identify the center of the hip. And then the bimolar axis, a third of the way over, or the tibial crest. And uh, that allows us to assess our uh, coronal plane, our sagittal plane and coronal plane alignment. I think we have full extension and our uh, hip to ankle alignment looks just right. So. So I think this covers well with a size 4, which again goes with the other side. So we've got a set of pins that allow us to fix the uh, tibial tray to the tibia. And they don't need to be seated all the way. And then we have uh, the tower for the drill guide that goes over the top. Make sure that's seated fully. So the, the, uh, di the drill is uh, size specific from uh, 1 to 1.5 green line. 2 to 3 is the yellow line and four to seven is the red line on the top. So in this specific case, it's a four. To, it's a four. So we want to drill down and have the line reach the top of the drill tower and stop at that point. We don't want to drive this beyond the line. And unlike if you're familiar with the old system, it was a two-piece uh, insertion. This is a one-piece insertion and also serves as the trial.
external impactor, which allows you to impact in the notch and force the femoral component in extension. So we'll first impact uh, straight on. And then I flip the, the, the impactor over and just tap the knee. It tends to poster stabilize. Femoral components tend to go on in a little flexion. And then you can re-tap it. So we've uh, placed the uh, tibial insert into place. Uh, we've rotated it in. We can assess the flexion space. Again, it does not seem excessively tight, but it, all is, it is also very well balanced, both medially and laterally. Flexion, which is in about 30 degrees of flexion, that's also very well balanced. That's a good estimation of our joint line expectation and, uh, and prediction. And then we want to make sure the knee achieves full extension. And you can see here that we've easily achieved full extension. And in extension, the knee is extremely stable. We'll now put the patella trowel on, take the knee again through flexion, assess the translation of the patella. So we have maybe a millimeter or two of translation laterally and zero to one medially. You can see the knee flexes to almost uh, about a crease. So we're at about 130, 125, 130 degrees here without any manual pressure. I call this a drop and dangle technique. So our flexion space is snug and balanced but not excessively tight. It's balanced, but not tight. Since I've been using the balance technique, uh, we just looked up our first 500 knees, and I've done two lateral releases. So our lateral release rate is almost zero uh, with this technique, which to me indicates that the flexion space predicts femoral rotation very accurately, especially in valgus knees. Valgus knees are a trick uh, in, in some instances, and and in, valgus, and, and in, in my experience, the balanced resection technique is a much better predictor of femoral rotation and enhances patella tracking. This is a, a new uh, inserter that's used for uh, femoral in insertion. It's a locking insert, very easy to use. Uh, the, the implants tighten to the inserter by twisting the handle. We then impact it in place. Allows you to translate it, position it where you like. Now we're looking close. And then just a very simple extraction by just loosening up the handle and squeezing the tongs on the side. A little blue post to help stabilize the insert. The insert's rotated in laterally first, and then medial, and then we extend the knee. 